Hi, beautiful writers. Thanks for joining me today. Today we will be discussing how to make a villain lovable. Hmm. <laughs> but before we get started, I would love if you would subscribe if you haven't already and hit that notification button. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much. Okay, so today we will be discussing how to make a bad guy or a villain lovable. Bad guys, villains, this bad guy is too gender specific. Villains can't be all bad. They become tropes, they become flat characters. I have a confession. I was in an MFA creative writing program for about a half a year. I dropped out because I couldn't balance full-time work, writing, and family obligations with the demands of the program. I also already had an agent, so it was kind of an easy decision to drop. But anyway, one of the requirements of the program was that we read books and we write papers about them. One of the books that I chose had a, the main character was a, a villain, a typical villain. And he was actually a villain who was hiding from his old life. And of course, you know what happens, the other bad guys, the villains, the mafia finds him and well, I'm not going to give away the book, but the author made the villain totally likable. You wanted him to succeed. At the time that I read that particular novel and I wrote that particular paper, my agent was shopping The Impaler's Wife, which is about probably the biggest villain in the world, which is Vlad Dracula. When I saw another author do this, it made me feel a million times better about what I was doing in mine. And then I realized there really actually is a way to make a villain likable. Another reason you want to make a villain likable is because the, it's a way for a reader to connect with him on a more personal level. You always want nuanced layered characters, especially if it's a villain that they need to overcome. You, you never want that tropish kind of character like we, we all hate him, we all want him to die. I even wrote an article for Fussy Librarian. I will drop the link below in the description box. And that article was, even the bad guys can and should be good, how Autumn Bardot took a historical villain and made him a love interest. And that was for, of course, The Impaler's Wife. It dawned on me while I was reading the novel for my MFA program that it's pretty easy to make a villain lovable. And think of TV shows like Lucifer. He's the devil, but everybody loves him. So here's how to add nuance and layers to your villain. One, give the bad guy an endearing nickname, maybe something quirky. Quirky is endearing. Two, make the villain smart. Not necessarily book smart, but intelligent, clever, maybe analytical. He's a thinker. Readers like thinkers, people who mull and ponder and reflect. We like that because a lot of us are like that. Three, make the villain a good mother, father, dog owner, cat owner, uncle, aunt, one that worries about their family or their pets. It's hard to totally hate someone who is taking care of their mama, <laughs> right? This shows that the villain has heart and also makes them more real. Number four, make the villain be a sweet husband or wife or lover. Show that he's faithful, cares about his spouse. Same, same thing, it shows that they have heart. And also it shows that they are lovable to someone else. And make that love interest be a good person. Not materialistic, okay, but honest. They have morals and values. It shows that the villain values virtuous down-to-earth traits. And the villain becomes more likable. Have the villain be reliable. He's there, well, mostly, for the people who need him. If he's not there, he feels really bad about it. And we like people who are reliable. Make the villain spiritual. This is a biggie. Have the villain believe in a higher power. 
that they have a calling, that they value wisdom and or clever philosophies. Make the villains murdering people or doing bad things about business. Just gotta do what they just gotta do. Comes with the job. In Dracula's case, he was the Prince of Wallachia. He had to protect his people from the invading Turks. He took pride in his, you know, job well done. Your villains should take pride in their job well done. They're just doing their job. Nine, give the villain hardships. Even better, give them drama. Was their family slaughtered? Were they beaten? Were they imprisoned? For instance, Vlad Dracula was in prison for most of his adolescence. Everybody can relate to emotional and physical pain. Give them that. 10. Make the villain be understanding. Maybe even, I don't know, sympathetic. I'm sorry I have to kill you, but... 11. Give the villain a tough childhood. We empathize with someone with less than a perfect upbringing. It doesn't matter if they're rich or poor or what, you can have crappy, horrible parents, okay? If they have bad role models, we don't expect them to be the pillar of society. So, and we empathize with them more and the villain becomes a little bit less tropish. Make the villain's quest be about getting home to their wife or their child or husband and child. Think of Shades of Odysseus or the Odyssey, okay? Which brings us to the next one, which is give the villain some traits of a Homeric hero. And you're probably thinking, Autumn, what are the traits of a Homeric hero? I'm glad you asked that. A Homeric hero never sacrifices their honor, even if it's a twisted villain's kind of honor, okay? A Homeric hero has physical prowess. They have minions. I always wanted minions. Didn't you always want some minions? I always wanted some minions. They are about protecting their reputation and they don't want the little people, little people, to suffer needlessly. So think in terms of quick kills for the villain. And a Homeric hero is always the best at something. They have some trait that they're amazing at. In today's world, honor is an antiquated ideal, yet we still value and respect someone who strives for it. So even if it's a kind of twisted honor, give that to your villain. 14, make the good person try to kill the villain first. Then it just kind of looks like self-defense on the villain's part, right? So I gave you 14 ways to make a villain not so villainish, to add texture, flavor, and nuance to them. Mix and match at will. You certainly don't have to have all of them. I mean, who doesn't love a quirky, intelligent, caring, spiritual, loyal, wrong side of the tracks, reflective, honorable villain? <laughs> Personally, I enjoy the challenge of changing preconceived notions about villains or badasses in history. I think they're more fun to write about. And my historical fiction is actually about badass women in history. The trick with writing a villain is to not diminish the evilness and yet still make the readers sympathetic. You need to walk that character tightrope. Too much good and the villain really isn't a villain anymore or just not believable too much bad and we despise him and do not connect with him at any level. And you want your readers to connect with everybody, even the villain. The challenge then is to manipulate the good traits in just the right amounts, sprinkling just enough character flaws and strengths through the course of the story to keep the reader constantly horrified and charmed by the villain. So that's it, 14 traits how to make your villain a little less villainous and a little bit more lovable, just so it tears at the heartstrings of your reader. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notifications button. And writers always remember to dream, create, and embrace. Bye-bye, thanks for watching.